Hello everybody, in this video, I'm going to be talking about MLflow and how we can use it for machine learning development. The first part, in the first part of the video, I'm going to talk about um, the challenges that we data scientists usually have to face. Um, these are precisely the ones that we are going to face using MLflow. And the second part, I'm going to show you how we can install MLflow in our computer, at least in our Windows computer. So, but first, let me show you my screen. I prepare a small presentation for this video. So, the first challenge is that it's difficult to keep track of experiments. Um, we data scientists have to perform several experiments before getting the expected results. The expected results. Um, by doing this, the next question emerges: uh, How do we tell which data, piece of code, or parameter? went into getting a particular result. So that's usually a hard question and it's usually hard to answer as well. Uh, the second challenge is that it's difficult to reproduce code. Uh, even if we have meticulously tracked um, all the code versions and the parameters, we have to capture the whole environment, the machine learning libraries and their versions. This is especially important when we want another data scientist to work with our code base or if we want to get the same results using a different platform for example in the cloud the third challenge is that there's no standard way to package and deploy models in this case each team uh, each data science team comes out with its own approach for each machine learning library meaning uh, a tensorflow model has its own approach um, a scikit-learn model has its own approach, and so on. In addition to this, the link between the code, sorry, between the model and the code and parameters that produced that model is usually lost, or is often lost. The last challenge is that there's no central store to manage models, their versions and stage transitions. A data science team creates many models. In absence of a central place to store and collaborate and to manage the model life cycle, um, data science teams face challenges in how they manage the model stages, from developing to staging and from there from to, and from there to production or archiving, for example. Now, you know, I just mentioned the challenges that we can face using MLflow. Now let's go to the coding part. Let's try to install MLflow in our computer so here we are this is basically a uh, empty directory I am in a folder called ML development um, the first thing that I like to do is to create a virtual n using virtual m a virtual environment so that could be virtual n and the name m so that's it I have my virtual n so I can keep my development environment for the rest of my computer and uh, in Windows, we activate um, this virtual environment using this command. It's done. It's activated. Now let's install MLflow. And you can install basically MLflow using two ways. One, it's cloned in the repository. You let's say if you want to get the, all the MLflow code, the source code. Um, another one is using just pid install MLflow. And this is going to take time because it's not just ten, uh, MLflow, it's also about the dependencies that MLflow needs. Okay, we are done. Let's uh, see, let's do P list, and MLflow is here. We have installed MLflow 1.28. Uh, uh, let's do something like this Python and let's import MLflow. Mm. And that's it. We have MLflow in our computers. So that's it. That's it for now. In the next video, I'm going to talk more about MLflow. Um, I am I am going to try to keep this video short 
Um, yes, that's it. The next video is going to be about how we can lock, use MLflow to lock parameters. So thank you uh, for listening to me and attending this video. Uh, see you there.